Hi, thanks for uploading your drafts. I'm putting comments on them. I've also taken a look at uh, the journals that everybody uploaded, and I've collected some questions uh, that uh, lots of folks seem to have. So let me run through those questions so that I can hopefully clarify exactly what I'm looking for in this first project. Uh, first question, does the essay need to be formatted in any specific way? Uh, the simple answer is no. Uh, the more complex answer is that when somebody asks that question, I think they're thinking that uh, there must be an introduction with a thesis at the bottom and then there has to be a topic sentence for each paragraph. Um, and I get it, they're working in this kind of essay uh, frame. But really you're not writing an essay or an academic essay per se, you're writing an op-ed. And so yes, you need an argument or a thesis or a series of claims, however you want to understand that. Uh, but must you put that argument at the end of an intro? No. Uh, must you start every paragraph with a topic sentence? Not necessarily. In other words, uh, you want to make sure that you provide support for the argument that you're establishing. But that really uh, is as far as it goes. Uh, with regard to where you put a thesis or if you actually use the thesis, that really is a rhetorical decision. Uh, and you can think about audience. Right? Is it going to help for you to give the audience an entire thesis up front? Or might that get in the way of uh, uh, really building the case how you want to build it? Um, so there's question number one. Number two, citations, works cited, must you include all of this stuff? Simple answer? Uh, no. More complex answer? This is not an academic essay written in MLA. Right? I'm asking you to write in a different genre. So yes, I want to make sure that you're giving credit to where you're getting the information, uh, but you do not necessarily have to provide me a works cited page that's documented according to MLA standards. Uh, quickly, if we take a look at the uh, sample student examples that I provided you, or the sample student op-eds, uh, you can see that uh, typically what students tend to do is they tend to just give me the URLs uh, at the bottom of their op-ed and that lets me access the information should I need to do it. That's one way. The second way uh, is that often what students do is they actually give credit in the writing. And so there's an example of that in here. Let me see where it went. Um, give me one second, give me one second, give me one second. Uh, here it is. Uh, if you look at this student's op-ed, in the op-ed itself, itself, it says, according to sandiego.org, each year about uh, 34.9 million people visit our beautiful city, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can see how they're actually crediting the website or the organization uh, in the writing. Uh, I have no problem with that. And in fact, if you think about it, uh, in op-eds that we read in newspapers or online or in magazines, that's often what happens is that people might cite a study or they might cite an article, but they give the name of the study or the name of the article or the name of the institution in the actual writing. So either of those two ways is fine for this assignment. Uh, grading on grammar and mechanics? Uh, yes, but be careful. Right? I'm not asking you to write so that I can grade grammar and mechanics. I'm asking you to write so that you can express your ideas. And so for us, uh, the logical strength of the piece and the rhetorical effectiveness of the piece are more important than grammar and mechanics. That doesn't mean that I won't take a look. What it means is that if grammar and mechanics get in the way of readability, then we have an issue. If you have some grammar and mechanical uh, issues, I will probably note them so that you can learn, but I'm not necessarily going to fail a paper because there are a couple of little grammar issues in there. Hope that clarifies. Uh, how many sources? Great question. Uh, I'm imagining everybody will have uh, between one and three outside sources. Remember that sometimes you're going to use outside sources as evidence for a claim that you're making. Although in this genre, you can also think about using anecdotal support. You can also think about using real world examples. And so there are other sorts of support that can work just as well. Uh, remember to think about audience. Sometimes a real world example that the audience will be familiar with will be just as strong as anything that you can bring in from the outside. Uh, must we highlight our claims? This question, I think, was in reference to the op-ed that I covered uh, last week. Uh, you do not need to highlight any of the claims that you make, although it's a great way of thinking about revision. If you can go through your paper and highlight your individual claims and you can see that you've supported them, then you know that your paper has logical strength. right? So you may want to consider that sort of uh, exercise just with regard to making sure that you have a strong piece. Can I use I? Hmm. 
Again, I see this coming from the academic essay perspective. I have no problem with people using I. And in fact, uh, you see I is often used in academic writing if we were to look at academic journals. I get that there are a lot of instructors uh, who tell students not to use I in essays. And I understand that those instructors are really trying to get the students to write from a more distanced, quote unquote, objective uh, position. Uh, in this genre, you're going to see I being used all the time. So I have no problem with you using I. Uh, where should I put my thesis? Uh, once again, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, everybody will have a thesis. Your thesis will be a series of claims that you're making. But whether or not you decide to use one explicitly, whether or not you decide to put it in the intro, whether or not you decide to do these things, that's really a rhetorical decision. I have to see that there's a clear argument being made, but I do not have to see this real kind of template-ish uh, introduction with a thesis at the bottom sort of approach. Um, I get the feeling, and it's cool, that a lot of you are working uh, as if you're producing this academic essay. And that's not what this is. So I hope that that frees you up a little bit. We will be writing uh, an academic research project in this class, but we're not doing it yet. Uh, I think that often the English classes that students have taken have really focused on what essay writing is. Uh, and even then, it's like essay writing in an English class. This class is really devoted to looking at writing in a much bigger or from a much bigger perspective. Uh, the writing that you do in a nursing program is different than an English essay. The writing you're going to do uh, in a business program would be different than an English essay. And so I want people to start to think about writing and writing in the real world and writing in different disciplines as different ways of approaching how we frame information. The entire world is not a five paragraph essay with three points. Hope this helps. Take good care.